What's that? The new Charlie Chaplin. The gold rush. He eats his boots. <laughs> yeah, get it out of there. How did we do? Six guilty, two got off. The indecent exposure? You got a month. Oh, six boots. <laughs> he was on a <the> bicycle. <laughs> Come on, you two, break it up. <laughs> What's that? Client yours, Mr. Kidd. It's him. Oh my god, not again. <sighs> Mr. Girdler. Just sit down, sit down. Look, uh, I'm sorry, things have been very slow. Have you got anywhere? I'm doing all I can, believe me, it just takes time. Time. It's bloody years. <clears throat> Getting it changed, that's a hard part. Once you're on a war pension, things are very... They don't bloody care. It's not that. Do you bloody care? Yes, of course I care. Mr. Kidd, your presence is requested. Quick. Right. Mr. Girdler, as soon as there's any news... Do you think there will be? Yes. I'll see to it. Now, I've, I've got to leave you. Thank you. You wanted me, sir. Who is this person with the appalling sniff? A client of yours? Yes. He was gassed. What? In the trenches. He, uh, he was in a gas attack and he can't help it. It got worse, so I'm trying to get him more money. Sit down, Mr. Kidd. Do you see yourself as having a future with this practice? A partnership, perhaps? Ultimately? I hope so, sir. Then, sir, you must learn to take yourself seriously. I've watched you chattering with the junior clerks. That won't do. I, I didn't realise. You must cultivate authority. I know. Take a look at yourself. What's that on your sleeve there? Uh, uh, that was the baby last night. I, I think she sponged that off. My, my wife, that is. Mr. Kidd. To have saddled yourself with a wife and family at this stage in your career. You know my opinion. I shan't repeat it. But now, now I have to trust you with an important assignment. Oh? Be assured I'd have dealt with it myself, but for other commitments. What is it? You know the Drablo estate? Well, heard of it. It's been my personal concern, of course. With this firm for half a century, Mr. Drablo was a China trader. He died out east many years ago, and we've looked after things ever since. Now his widow has just passed away, age 72. Now, I want you to attend the funeral. Of course. The day after tomorrow. Where will it be? Ah. In London? No, it's at a place called Prithin Gifford. A little market town on the coast. You'll go by train, of course. I understand. No, you don't. Not yet. You're to stay on and clear things up. Sort out Mrs. Drablo's effects and any documents. Retrieve all private papers, whatever they may be, wherever they may be, and put the house up for sale. It should take you about a week. A week? If you apply yourself. W wouldn't it be better I if you yourself... If I what? Uh, I mean, you know all this. Uh, Nothing to do with it. I simply don't. I can't. I, I mean, the Mr. background Kidd, history... I told you I can't. I'm needed here. You can manage. Just remember that you represent this firm. And for the Lord's sake, tidy yourself up. Tell him all about it. Eddie's been brave. 
What happened? It's all over now. Give her to me. Bessie pushed me. I did not. She did. It was that naughty wash tub that bumped poor Eddie. Finish the nappies. <laughs> Through the mangle twice now. Eddie, let Daddy get his coat off. That's a good boy. Yeah, that. I understand that. It's quite a cut. Eddie had iodine on it. Iodine? <laughs> yeah. Come here, Tara. I wonder if I've got anything for you. Let's see. No, I don't think we look there. I'm looking at that one. What's that? Anything? Yeah. Oh? What's that? It's a kazoo. What's this? <laughs> you tried. That's good. Go and show it to your mum. Go on. <laughs> show it to Bessie. What a day. How Bessie, it's like having three children instead of two. It really is. Hello, little witch. Hello. <laughs> Got to go away for a week or two. What? Well, it's business. Old Sweetman made it quite clear it's essential to my advancement. Oh, how? I don't want to. Oh, are we far from Chris and Gifford, do you know? I do know. But half an hour. Excuse me, you drop this. Thank you. I couldn't help noticing, uh, Mrs. Drablo. Yes. Don't tell me you're a relative. I'm her solicitor. Ah. On the way to the funeral? I am. You'll be about the only person that is. Well, I gather she had no immediate family. No friends. An old woman living alone, you might expect her to be a bit of a recluse. So you might. Mr... My name's Arthur Kidd. Sam Tuvey. You evidently knew her, Mr. Tuvey. Well, hardly that. Not in recent times. I had no cause to visit her. And even if I had... Town far. Over there, about half a mile. You won't mind a bit of a trot. Right. I, I'm Mr. Tooby. Yeah. Where can I find a cab? Cab? Here? This time of night? <laughs> All right, laddie. Come with me. Here you go, Charlie. Go round by the Gifford Arms, will you? Take Mr. Kidd's case. Thank you. Go around that way, Mr. Kidd. Ah, 
Shire is a decent enough place. They look after you. Just stay in the one night. No longer. I'm to see to the house, warm Mrs. Jabler's things. Eagle Marsh House. Yeah, I expect to be in and out of there for several days. Do you know? Mr. Kidd, if you should need anything, anything at all, man, that's where you can find me. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Judy. Good night. Good night. Good night. It's gone time, sir. Oh, my name's Arthur Kidd. I sent a telegram. Who oh, are? Wow. From London. There's uh, your room's ready. Albert! Here, will you? Drat boy. Oh, there we go, it? Albert! Oh, all right. Very well. Come on, this way. Come on. There, you'll be warm enough. Keep the window shut, though. Keep the frets out. Frets? Yeah, frets. Sea frets. Sea mists. In a bar this time of year. They roll up in a minute out in the marshes. What you here for? The market? I'm a, I'm a solicitor. Oh, lawyer, are you? What is it? Farm leases? No, it's about a local lady, a Mrs. Drabno. Oh, her. She just died. I know. Oh, I sent you here. Did you have any dealings? No, I didn't know her. I didn't want to. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. It's market day tomorrow. That's 40 lunches. Now, have you ate? Uh, not yet, no. Ah, down in a quarter of an hour in the bar. Yeah, I've just got a letter to write. Quarter of an hour. Mr. Kidd, Arnold Pepperell, excuse my blood. You've been managing things here? Yes. Uh, these are the documents from Mr. Sweeney. Oh, thank you. If you're ready, I think we should leave. I trust you were comfortable. The market days are about their busiest. It's all right. It's noisy, though. Welcome to the side men. The way from the Kid, the Reverend Greed. Your relative? Here it comes. Solicitor. Oh. For the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Beloved, God has a purpose for all of us in this life to which he has sent us. Sometimes we may find that purpose hard to discern, whether in others or in ourselves. But the test of our faith in him is this, that we should believe that he will reveal his purpose in his own good time, whether in this world or the next, which is his alone. So it is not for us mere mortals... Uh, to seek to fathom the unfathomable, to know the unknowable. Only to trust that God in his wisdom must have a purpose for every human life that he creates or be very sure that he, that he would not have created it. So it is with our departed sister, 
Alice Streplow. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change the body of our low estate that it may be like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Well, she had one mourner anyway. I saw no one. Oh, she was inside the church and then waiting outside. I thought she looked unwell, but if she's there now, perhaps somebody ought to go and have a word with her. No one. No. Go away! Quick! Get away from here! Mr. Petrel, what's wrong? They shouldn't, shouldn't watch like that. It's not be allowed. It's morbid curiosity. You're right. No, I, I, I have a mind to speak to the school teacher. Look, you frightened that poor woman away. What? Well, she's gone. Now my office is here. How do you feel now? I'm better, thank you. Perhaps you should have a drink of something. Now, Mr. Kidd, I have views on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Take a seat. Eh? So, Eel Marsh House. Willed to Mrs. Drablow for her lifetime. Correct. And now it's to be offered for sale. Well, I can deal with that. But as for her personal possessions... That's what I'm here for. I'll sort out all her papers and make an inventory. Will you come over with me and show me where I can find all... No, I can't spare the time. I have some auctions coming up. Uh, if, if you've got a clerk I could borrow for a day or two... I'm on my own. I'm not in a big way of business, not like your City of London firms. Now, here are the keys... I've arranged for a man to drive you at uh, one o'clock. His name's Keckwick. He's quite dependable. Um, can't I walk? There's no road, Mr. Kidd. Then how... how it's just a kind of causeway across the marsh. You can use it only at low tide. Uh, otherwise, it's underwater. I see. Now, Keckwick knows the tides. Now, you must respect them, Mr. Kidd. They come in fast. You could get swept away. Some people have been. Thank you. He's going to buy a big bunch of my white heather and make his lady please. And she did. Yeah, thank you. All first up here. Make sure now. The offside. Where are we here? Take a look. Keep out of it, you. And I'm going to buy to clear off. Oi, you little devil. Come back here. Stop her, get off! Oh. 
There's a log jam down to here. No mistake, no. Catch them ropes. He's shifting. Get on it, man. You can jump all in. I can't hold it. I can't hold it. You did well, lad. I had to. Nobody else. That lot could have killed you. Yes. Now, come on. We need a drink. How was the funeral? Well, over anyway. Well, oh, by the way, you're slightly wrong. What about? Well, you said there'd be no mourners. Well, there was one. Just one. Who was he? I was a woman. A woman? Mm. She was a mourner. I mean, all dressed in black. Are you going to the house? Uh, this afternoon. Can I get you another? Oh, no, thank you, lad. No, I've got to keep a clear head. I've got deals to sell. Now, remember what I said. Anything you need. We're in a bit of trouble out there today. More bread lads? An accident. You heard about it? Yeah, I've got time for it. Yes. Yeah. Some gypsy kid nearly got mashed up. The fella pulled her out of it. So I believe. Should have left well alone. Too many gypsies around here. Market day brings them in. <laughs> you know him, do you? Sam Tovey. Yeah, a bit. He's had a good day. Bought a lot of beasts. Look at him, that pleased with his scent. You don't like him either. Can't match his offers. You're not from around here? No. Let me guess. Buying and selling land, maybe. Big Sam's your man. Greedy for it. I say you'll have half the county. Just a house. Who are? On the marshes. Real marsh house? Yes. <laughs> You'll not sell that. <laughs> nobody will have to do with it. Not Big Sam or nobody else. Why? Pass the salt. Ah, you Mr. Kid? Yes, you're uh, Gatwick. I'll be here with you then. Go on. Is it far? I look so to the causeway. How long is the causeway? That depends. On what? If there is any. The tide's in. It ain't there at all. I kept her going, you know. The old woman. Twice a week, regular, I've gone out. Sometimes more. If there be special needs. Is this it? The causeway? Yeah. It's got a name. Nine Lives Causeway, they call it. Like what the cat's got. It's what you need out here. Where the threat? Seamist. 
That's a foreigner's name. He's so quick. That's it is. You go wrong here, and you're in the marsh. And then you're done for. I've none of you lost. Oh, I... Knees out, always. This were our room. This was her chair. It was me that found her. When she died, I found her dead. Last week, that was. She was just sitting there. I thought she'd say good morning, Mr. Keckwood. But she didn't. Is that really electric light? Come, I'll show you. He must have been keen on newfangled things, but he died out foreign. Mostly, she was just a widow. There, now you've got electric light. Thank you. I'll be back before the tide. Three o'clock, no later.
This is Arthur Kidd speaking. I'm in Eomarsh House among all Mrs. Drabler's rubbish. to meet you! Get quick! Get quick! Get quick, I can't see you! Where are you? Get 
bit slowed up by the threat. Uh, I thought you were... I heard you yelling for me. Don't worry, I'd not have left you. Better get in then. Walk on. Going back again? Uh, I, I'm not sure when. Give me a call. They all know Keckwick. Hold on. Edmund Tuvey died 22nd of April, 1910. Each four years, always in our hearts. Mr. Tuvey, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, this isn't really a convenient moment, Mr. Kidd. We're conducting business. How do you get on? I think you may be able to guess. I trust you were able to find the papers you needed and make a useful start. Oh, yes. Mr. Pepperell, I saw her again. Who? That woman. And there was more. It's all right. It's all right. I'm sorry, Mr. Tooby. We'll go over these clauses some other time. It's late. Yes. Mr. Kidd, I'd be glad to offer you supper. I think you need it. Throw him down, Mr. Kidd. <laughs> Doesn't he love you? I've never seen him make such a fuss of anyone. He knows your nature, you see. What's his name? Spider. Wasn't that a dreadful name to put on him? Mm. Spider. Was my husband's idea. Well, as a pup, he looked like one. His little, little hairy thing, all legs. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Do you have children, Mr. Kidd? Yes, two. Yes, I was sure you did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Boy and girl, three and, uh, no, four and naught. Mm -hmm. and, and what are they called? Uh, boys, Eddie, Ed, uh, Edward, that is, I mean, we don't call him that. And the girl? She's Wynne, Winifred. She's not quite six months, so we're just beginning to get to know her. She's, uh, she looks a lot like my wife. I hope she would. Uh, they drive you mad sometimes. Oh, yes. But I... But we weren't blessed. Were we, Sam? No, we weren't blessed. Supper is served. Come along, Mr. Kidd. Can you guess how much I've gathered up, Arthur? Nine farms, big and small. 12,600 acres. Half a dozen faithful tenants. God knows how many laborers. And I'm not going to stop now. I've heard it said you'll own half the county. <laughs> I might at that. Why do I do it? I don't know. Why do you? I don't know. No reason except to go on and on. 
Doing it becomes its own reason, you see. And in the end, there's no point at all. It's like all hobbies. Essentially pointless. You agree, Margaret? My territorial ambitions are singularly pointless. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidd. I've enjoyed meeting you. So much. Good night, Mrs. Studio. Let's talk in there. But the worst part, the hardest to take, that is, was the noises, the Napoleon trap in the marsh and the screaming. Right now, I'll be devil's advocate. Suppose I suggest a perfectly commonplace explanation. You can try. There were dense patches of sea fog. Yes. Now, those can distort sound. Blanket some off and let others through. Suppose what you heard was Kekwick's trap on the far end of the causeway, on his way back. About the screams? Seabirds. No. Ah, you're a townie. You don't know what a gull can sound like. They can make cries you'd swear came from, say, a cat or a baby. I wish I could believe that. Do you believe in ghosts? Never have. Why not? They were just stories. Made up? Yes. So you're a skeptic. Well, I was until today. She was quite real. I, I felt I could have walked up to her and touched her. Did she see you? Hey? See you? Did she? Like I'm seeing you now? Yes. I'm sure. It was her eyes here. She wasn't just looking, she, she was hating. You could tell? It was somehow like a hunger. A kind of dreadful, mad hunger that had all turned to hate. Against you? It felt like that. There was a... sort of power coming from her. And that's why you ran. You were scared. Well, she, she, she neither spoke nor came near me. If she was able to make me afraid, well, that was all. I'm going back. To London? No, to the house. You shouldn't go there. Mr. Tuvey, I've been entrusted with a job and I've hardly begun it. You shouldn't go there alone. Well, I can find no one to go with me. No. Nobody will. You're a brave young fella, there's no doubt of it. But after what you've told me tonight, you're not brave enough. Nobody could be. Well, if that old woman could stand it all those years. Well, perhaps she went out of her mind. I'll find out. I want to hear a voice on the machine. Don't do it, Arthur. Thank you for a splendid meal, Mr. Tuvey. It's helped me no end. And now I must say good night. You're set on it, then. I am. Out there. On your own. If... If I see her again, I won't be afraid. I promise you. Take the dog. I'm sorry? You'll need a companion. Or would he come? Ask him. Would he come, Spider? <laughs> a bike? Oh, I reckon so. Well, he can have a land of it, can't he, Albert? Thank you. I can take some provisions, enough for a couple of days. Bread and a few tins. Well, fair enough. So you will not be needing the room again? Uh, no. You stay there. He'll marsh house. Say good night then.
Para. Come on. Good job, good job.
It was exactly the same sequence of sounds as the previous time. A pony and trap going into the marsh, getting stuck and sinking. Every detail is as if it was somehow recorded, like the machine I'm speaking into now. It would be a great relief to know that's all it was, with the voices, particularly the child screaming. That was two hours ago, and there's been nothing since. I'm in the study. I've made up a bed here and lit a fire. I'm going to work on now. The dog is a great comfort. spiders just to keep you warm.
Dog has gone. I have not the slightest doubt that he is enticed to his death on the marsh. Before that, something occurred. So strange that. September the 9th. 
Kekwick brought the heavy cart with things for winter, oil and coals and food in tins. He is a good man, and I pay him well, too. Last night, she was troublesome all about the house, but I do not mind her. I will not. I will Last night, not. I was awakened before my clock struck three. Much tumult in the other rooms. I called out using her name, but no answer. I think she cannot answer. When she came last night, I mocked at her. I will not be feared of my own kin. My own kin. has become wicked, and worse. She has found ways to make me hear their calamity in the marshes. That poor... Keep hearing it, the, the drowning, the drowning. Steady, lad. Uh, I didn't know it was you. But I brought the wagonette. The motor's too heavy for the causeway. Spider came home. He, you mean he's alive? Oh, he's filthy, half drowned. Been in the marsh, poor thing. Uh, he got away. So, oh. I knew there was trouble. He's come to the study. You've been busy. I think I've found her. Who? Her. Uh, the woman I saw. That's her. It's what she must have been once. Uh, it's hot in here. I know those eyes. I saw them yesterday. What else? Mrs. Drablow had no children. Instead, she adopted one. It's all in here. Child named as Nathaniel, infant son of Janet Goss, spinster. Goss. Now, who was she? You know, don't you? Well, my kin, Mrs. Drablow says here. She was the sister. A younger sister? She had a bantling. A what? A bastard child. They tried to cover it up? Well, I had to. Respectable people. We all knew, though. I was only a lad, but I had the tale. Look at him. Happy family. Not for long. Death certificates. It's the same date. Nathaniel Drablow, adopted son of Mrs. Alice Drablow, aged six years. Death by suffocation and drowning. And Janet Goss, spinster, aged 35. In the marsh? Yes, had to be. What else did people say? She tried to get him back. Just for herself. Well, she was his mother. She was desperate. She ran about the streets, shouting. You saw it? Well, at that age, you'd try not to. And in the end... She stole him, got hold of a pony and trap, got him into it whether he wanted to go or not. It's what happened, I've heard it. When he screams for his mother, who's he screaming for? Which of them? Oh, Lord. An accident, was it? Have you found everything you want? Uh, yeah, yes, it's, it's mostly rubbish, not all. Well, let's pack it up and go. Listen to Mrs. Trappler. Today is 
the anniversary of poor Nathaniel's death and hers. I will go to the grave and pray and hope she will not plague me there with what she has become. Amen. What she has become. The inn will be closed. They'll all be in bed. I found the nursery. It was, it was locked at first, but then it wasn't. Come and see. Now, you've been through enough. Please, it wasn't anything bad. you guessed. Say it. Somehow, a child dies. Illness or accident. It follows quick after. That gypsy child. Aye. You saved that one. But there were others. Lots of others. Aye. Beautiful kitty she was. I'm not thinking to look at him. She was five. And you? Us as well. about there? Who is that? I'm sorry to drag you out of bed, Preston. Oh, Mr. Tovey, I'll not give you a moment, sir. Mr. Kitt, you said you'd not be back. Well, he's changed his plans. Has he? I'm not surprised. But he's still got the room. Oh, you mean look? Yeah, I might not have. Now, remember that. Preston, shut up. Go and get his things. Uh, hey, you go get some rest. Uh, <coughs> I don't know how to thank you. Well, don't. He'd probably say my... Well, all my reason, anyway. I'd stay in bed. Talk tomorrow.
Hello? It's for you. Where are you? Who are you? Nathaniel? It's close. I... Swigman's... He's going to play dominoes like... The six against the six. Quiet. Quiet. So put them back in the box. For you. They've been so good. They told me all about it. Oh. Well, how you got to chill out there on the marshes and then developed a fever that turned out to be. that might have been dangerous. Uh, how, how long has it been? Days. No, you're not to worry about anything at all. The children are fine. Oh, bless you. I didn't risk that. <laughs> I got my mother to come and stay. That's a lot better. How are you feeling, Nath? Rotten but alive, eh? He's ready for some beef tea. Mm. My wife will do that. I'll ask her. She's lovely. Thanks for not telling her much. Leave it so. That night. A woman. She came for me. 
I wondered. First it was the child. And then... It's over now. The house burned. What? It's burned to the ground. The fire engine came, couldn't get to it. And tide was in. I think I heard. I saw it. I wonder... I lit, I lit fire. And then there was all those papers. Put it out of your mind. But if... If, if, if it was what, what I did... There could be other causes. Yes. It's gone. That's what matters. All done. Nothing to sell. <laughs> Mr. Pepperell's lost his percentage. <laughs> now, back to London. The minute you're fit. Sire's more pups, you shall have one. I'll send the best in the litter. <laughs> right. Thank you, sir. Bye. Great pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. They're so young. I pray for them every night. Yes, I know you do. If I could only believe it was all over. It's all done, Margaret. Daddy, Daddy! <laughs> no, it's happened. <laughs> that was the best boy in the world, eh? You've been good? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, thanks for looking after the mother. Oh, Granny's privilege. She's absolutely <laughs> loved it, haven't you? Of course. <laughs> now he's the one that needs looking after. Oh, don't worry, I've nagged him enough. Come on, sit down. Too heavy for me, you are. <laughs> oh. Poor dear. Got anything to say to me? Did the seaside. Did I? I told him. I suppose I did. I never thought of it like that. Guess what I might have in my pocket. Let's have a look in there. No, that's a watch. You've seen that before. What's that? Ah, oh, that's a souvenir of St Pancras Station, that is. No, I'm going to eat them if you don't. Bessie, what's this? Somebody's birthday. It's a coming home cake, isn't it? Yes. Bessie made it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bessie. You're welcome. That's just what he is. Very, very welcome. His new win. Well, uh, I suppose I better cut it. <laughs> Anybody got a knife? office yet? I better. In a day or two? Perhaps. In a day or two. Good morning. Oh, Mr. 
the kids. Morning, sir. Sorry to hear you got sick. Yes. Well, all over now. Anybody waiting? No, we didn't make any appointments for you. Do look a bit done up, you know. Is he in? Half past nine. You bet. Come in. Mr. Kidd, do take a seat. Thank you. How are you now? Better. I shouldn't like to think you devoted yourself to the firm's interests to the point of endangering your health. It wasn't a good place. Those marshy situations never are. Just as well you didn't go yourself, sir. I have been there. Have you? I had to visit Mrs. Trablow on some minor financial matter. You didn't stay there? No. Why should I? I take it you're trying to imply something about the house's reputation. Well, many old lonely houses acquire an odd. You don't have to take it seriously. I think you did. How dare you? I think you let me go because you were scared. Well, that's all water under the bridge, so to speak. The house no longer exists. It burned. Were you there? No. Nothing I take it to do with your activities in the house? I, I've been assured not. I had to ask. So now nothing remains but to check over the contents of that box. The box? I think you should do it yourself, just to make sure it's all there, everything you put in it. It's here. It was delivered, let me see, two days ago by rail. Dispatch from the place where you stayed, the Gifford Arms, was it? It's in your room. There. Yes, that's it. Go through it in your own good time. In a sense, it no longer matters. The real estate is effectively gone and most of the personal stayed along with it. Yes. Still, you may wish to see it all attended to, for your own satisfaction. Yes, I may. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Kidd, is it in order for us to book your appointments? I mean, will you be in? I expect so. Has anybody inquired? Your friend, Mr. Girdler, old Sniffy. Oh, dear. Oh, and uh, Jack had something. Jack! Tell him the one you saw. Oh, yeah. What? Well, it might have been anybody. Just hanging about outside, not sure whether to come in or not. The way some of your clients do. <laughs> they got sense. It's going to law. The more I see it... Jack, what did he say? Oh, nothing. It was a she, anyway. A woman? Well, uh, well, what was she like? Oh, I didn't see her face. But she might have been a widow, the sort of clothes she had on. About appointments. Just get out!
Here you are, sir. The proof. Paraffin? Yeah. I smell it straight off. What the hell were you up to? I'll deal with this. Here, give that to me. Ooh. Evidence. Look at that. Are you mad? I had to burn it all. Why? You knew, didn't you? You knew all along, and you still let me die! I did not! I did not! Go. Go home and stay there. There's nothing, not today. Arthur. Come back to bed. Won't you tell me? Hmm? There are things to tell me, aren't there? Let's get away from here. When? Tomorrow. Nothing to stop us. We'll just go. Yeah. 